Hi kids, Crafty Carol here at Cool School. Now one of my favorite kinds of crafts to make is a costume craft. I love playing dress up. So let's watch all of my costume craft videos right now, starting with my robot mask. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to another brand new craft with me, Crafty Carol, right here at Cool School. Today's craft is a super awesome one. If you like awesome stuff, you came to the right place because we're making a robot mask. So we had a request in the comments from Vian Zachary asking, could you make a giant robot, please? It would be awesome. I agree, it would be awesome. We're not gonna make a giant robot today, just the mask, but you know, we'll work up to the giant robot one day, one piece at a time. So what do you need to make this craft? This one's pretty simple. You can use a lot of stuff that you find around your house. A paper bag, the cardboard roll from a paper towel roll. I got the lids of two mason jars. I got glue and I got scissors. I got duct tape and I have some extra special sparkly duct tape. And then I have some sparkly pipe cleaners. Maybe not something you got laying around the house, but you know, if you're into super awesome crafts, like I am, you might. You might have a whole closet full of pipe cleaners. I don't know. Does anybody have the time? What time is it? I don't seem to. Oh, you know, I know what time it is. It's time to start making this craft. So first thing, we got a paper bag and I just trimmed off the bottom here because I didn't want it to be too tall. You don't want to look like Abraham Lincoln wearing a stovepipe hat as a robot. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you're super into history. I'm just going to start covering this in some duct tape, making it look awesome. And I'm just going to cover every little bit of my bag. Well, okay, so we have our bag all covered in duct tape. We got the sparkly silver in front and just plain silver duct tape in the back. So let's give our robot some eyes. So we're gonna use these mason jar lids. And I got a Sharpie here. Got my jar lid down here. I'm just gonna trace on the inside. So see, there you go. You got a black circle there. And I'm gonna do another one. Don't wanna put them too far apart because you wanna actually be able to see out of the eye holes yourself. So you don't go around with your robot mask bumping into things. You don't wanna be a clumsy robot. All right, so there we go. We got two eyes there. You can see right next to me, it's, it's about where, where my eyes would be. All right, so let's cut these out. What I do when I have to cut out a circle like this, I fold it up a little, and then I give myself a snip right there, and then it's easy to cut out. So let's do it again. So you see I've got my circle here, so I'm gonna take my bag and I'm just gonna fold it right there a little bit in the middle of the circle, and then I'm just gonna give myself a little little snip. Then I can just reach right in there and cut out my circle. Well, all right, there you go. It's already looking pretty cool. Kind of looks like a ghost robot right now though. So let's add, let's add these mason jar lids. It's gonna make it really pop. So you just make a ring of glue around your jar lid and then you just smush it down right here and then you just hold it for a while. And you just, you know, you daydream. You think about fun things like having a robot. So once your glue is dry, check it out. You got some pretty nifty robot eyes right there. I'm just gonna draw the mouth on with a Sharpie. How's that looking? That's looking like a pretty good robot mouth right there, that little rectangle. So then we're gonna cut that out, pinch it up a little bit, give it a snip. This is why I like to use a paper bag instead of a cardboard box. Cardboard can be really hard to cut. Paper bags are nice, easy to work with. Well, that's looking pretty good. All right, so now's the time to add all sorts of fun stuff to your robot mask. You can add springs or bolts, or you could even add mouse ears like Ricky Ricotta's Mighty Robot. I like those books by, by Dave Pilkey and Dan Santat. So let's see, what are we gonna add to our robot? I'm gonna take this and I am gonna cut a little. Let's do another one of those the same size. So let's cover this in our sparkly duct tape. Now I'm gonna cut little tabs there at the bottom. I can bend these out and it's easier to glue on. All right, so let's decorate our other one. Put a little glue. And you gotta just sit there and wait for it to dry. I feel like I spent half my life waiting for glue to dry. Well, I don't know about you, but I think this robot's looking pretty darn good. I'm almost expecting him to start talking to me in some kind of kind of robot language. 
some like, a lot of beeps and boops. Like that. My goodness. Let's add a few other little things here, because I got these pipe cleaners. We could add some little springs springing off. Well, what if we gave him some eyebrows? That might be cute. We'll just take this, uh, this pipe cleaner and just sort of twist it around my fingers until it's a nice little little curly spring like that. I'm gonna use tape. I don't think glue is gonna work so well on these pipe cleaners. Turn around towards me. You ready for your close up, Mr. Robot? Oh yeah? We might just have to go ahead and make a giant robot one of these days, cause I am liking this. This is fun. Get a nice big giant robot costume, go out on the streets, walk around, go to the grocery store, just push in your cart, go to school in your robot costume. And ta-da, here we go. Our very own do-it-yourself, you made it, robot mask. Now I just gotta figure out how to put my glasses on with this thing. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here at Cool School with a brand new craft. Today we're gonna be getting crafty with some duct tape. Today we're gonna be making a bow out of duct tape. You can wear it in your hair, you can attach it to your backpack, you can give it to your mom for Mother's Day, you can put it on a present for your dad for Father's Day, or send it to me for Crafty Carol Day. Ooh, you can wear it as a bow tie if you're going to a really fancy dinner or the opera, or really nice jazz brunch. All right, so what do you need to make this craft? It's super duper simple. You're gonna need some duct tape. I've got some from Kid Made Modern. Some safety pins in case I wanna attach it to something. Or a bobby pin if I'm gonna put it in my hair. And that's it. So first step, we're just gonna pull some tape off here. I'm just gonna pinch right here and rip it. And I'm gonna just place that down here, sticky side up. Stay there, stay there. And I'm gonna take another piece, I'm gonna make this just a little bit shorter. Pinch, tear. All right, so we've got our two pieces of tape, and then I'm gonna take my tape here, I'm gonna line it up, and I'm gonna place this one sticky side down on top of the other tape. And then you still got this sticky part here, let me show you what that sticky part's for. You're gonna fold, and then you're just gonna fold right over. Nice little circle of tape here. Get it focused, ah, uh, there you are, hey. All right, so we got our little circle here. Let's make a little strip of tape for the middle. Roll me a little bit of tape here, not much, just a little. Pinch, rip. And for this one, all I'm gonna do is just fold it over, make a skinny little ribbon out of it. First like that, and you're just gonna keep folding. Voila, we have a nice little duct tape ribbon here. This is so easy. You're gonna be writing in the comments, Crafty Carol, I made 175 of these, because they were so easy. I made one for every kid in my class. That's a big class. There are too many people in your classroom. Okay, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is just scrunch this up. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm just gonna take a little pinch here, and then I'll kinda fold it here. Then I'm gonna do a little, another little pinch there until, da 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 you got yourself a little bow tie. Okay, so then we take our little ribbon here, and we're just gonna wrap it around the middle. And then how are we gonna attach it all together? Well, that's pretty easy. We gotta. A whole ton of duct tape here. Put a little tape under here, under the first part of our loop, and then we're just gonna tuck it right underneath there. Don't wanna make it too tight so you can get your safety pin or your bobby pin through there. I'm just gonna stick it through right here. Oh my gosh, I look so fancy, I look like a butler. I'm gonna make a small one here for my hair out of this pink tape, if I can find the end of it. Sometimes I'll spend a whole day looking for the end of a roll of tape. Found it! Pinch, pinch, rip, a little shorter. Boop. And you just lay them down on top of each other. Fold over, fold over onto your sticky. Make a ribbon, just fold, fold, and fold. Scrunch, scrunch, and scrunch. Scrunching's my favorite part, mostly because I like seeing scrunch. Ooh, I like this hair bow. This looks like something Draculaura from Monster High would wear. Just put a ribbon around there. And let's just put a little tape, put a bobby pin on that one. Well, then you got a hair bow. That's pretty awesome. Let me get this with my hair. And there you have it, boys. Ooh, oh my gosh, my bow tie is so fancy. It gave me a 
fancy accent there for a second. I really did sound like a butler. So I was gonna say, there you have it, boys and girls, a super easy DIY duct tape bow. Well, hey there, kids. Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft for you here at Cool School. A bunch of you told me you wanted ideas for Father's Day crafts, so I thought real long and hard, what do dads need? Well, they need a tool belt. So, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own do-it-yourself handy dandy tool belt. So I got inspired to make a belt because our friends over at Kid Made Modern are making a belt, but theirs is a, theirs is a fashion belt that you wear to hold your pants up and look super awesome and cool. Ours is also gonna make you look super awesome and cool, but it's, it's got some utility to it too. So let's go over the tools you're gonna need to make this craft. We're gonna need some string, a stapler, some zipper bags, duct tape, and scissors. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna take our zipper bags here and we're gonna cover it with some stylish duct tape. Just because you're going out to work with tools doesn't mean you can't have a little style. All right, and just like that, and you're just gonna cover your bag however you want. I'm gonna probably mix mine up, you know, not just do the purple and black, so let's try some yellow here. Da -da -da, with that, cool. Well, all right, look, there you go. You got your whole front covered here, and you can just trim off any, any extra parts you have here. Be careful you don't cut your bag, though. Oh, look at that, that's a pretty awesome looking pocket if I do say so myself, and I, I just did. I said it, it's a good pocket. We're not just gonna have one pouch for our tool belt. Let's make two pouches. Let's just go with some solid yellow first. This reminds me of the time we made our Pokemon pencil cases, so, you know, should watch that after you're done. Pretty good craft. Well, all right, these are looking pretty good. This is gonna be a pretty stylish tool belt. You're gonna wanna wear it to school. And your, your dad, if you give it to him for Father's Day, he's probably gonna wear it to every fancy occasion he has. But let's do this. Let's leave one of them nice and big so you can fit lots of stuff in there. And then this one, we're gonna make little compartments. So how are we gonna do that? Super simple. We're gonna take our stapler here. Gonna put your, your bag in about a third of the way. Move it down almost like a sewing machine. Don't staple up too far because you want to still be able to zip open and close. Flip it around to the other side here and make your other compartment. And there we go, we got three separate compartments here. All right, so we got our pockets done. So let's make the belt. I'm gonna pull a pretty long piece there. And we're just gonna lay that out. If you're making it for yourself, you just make it big enough so it'll go around your waist. If you're making it for your dad or your mom, then you'll just make it a little bit bigger. I assume they're bigger than you, they usually are. Oh, let's, let's add some string. So the reason we're adding string is because string is gonna be a little easier to tie than tape will be. Just make some string. Gonna lay it out, there we go. There we go. Looks almost like police tape. Oh my gosh. Watch out. There was a crime scene. Somebody came and stole all my candy. Call the authorities, please. And just to cover up my sticky, sticky side of the tape right here, I'm just gonna use small pieces of tape because it's gonna be a lot easier to handle. You know, if you have two extra long, crazy pieces of tape that you're trying to stick together, you're gonna get all tangled up and you're gonna get tied up into a bunch of tape and then you won't be able to get out of your crafting chair. You can even go to the bathroom. All right, look at that. So easy. Just sticking tape to tape. That's all we're doing. It's a pretty good looking little belt right there. Well, it doesn't look like a belt yet, but you know what I'm saying. It's gonna be a belt soon. Well, let's make some belt loops here. Just gonna tear off a little bit of tape and we're gonna just fold and fold and fold. And so you want these loops to be big enough to fit all the way around your belt here. All right, so that's good right there. So we made our loops. Take a little bit of tape here. And just tape it around. Okay, well there you go, you got a handy dandy loop. Let's make another one. Okie doke. So let's make that the same size. We're gonna do two loops for each pouch. 
So, I got two. Let's do the math. I need, uh, let's see, I'm gonna need two more. All right, thank you. Thanks for shouting that out. I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, okay, so we have our loops here. We got four loops. We're gonna put them on the back side of our pouches here. Take one here. Got that taped down. Let's tape down our other. And you just wanna line it up. All right, so check it out. Handy dandy. We got some loops. All right, and then you just do the same thing to your other bag. So we got our loops on both sides, on both pouches. So let's loop this belt. And just pull that through. So it looks like right there in the back. And then, da -da -da -da. here's our tool belt from the front. We got one big pocket here that zips and unzips. We got our pocket here with three compartments, also zips and unzips. Well, let's try this baby on, see how she looks. And there you have it, kids. You got a handy dandy tool belt. And you can decorate it however you like. If you're giving it to your dad for Father's Day, you can write something awesome about your dad there. Or put like a superhero patch on the front. So many different things you can do with your tool belt. So like, what are, what are we gonna put in there? Go ahead and put candy in there. And put some duct tape in there because it's good for crafting. Some markers. Oh my gosh. Just filling this thing up with goodness. All right. Well, hey there, kids. Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft for you right here at Cool School. Gee, I don't know. I hope you like minions. I think a few of you do. I've seen comments asking for a minions craft. So let's do a minions craft. We're going to be making Minions goggles. Maybe you can wear them to the movie. Or my yellow sweater for the Minions episode. I don't know if you noticed, I ate a banana earlier, just in preparation. Let's get crafting. Here's what you need. You need scissors, white paper, two mason jar lids, a ribbon, some duct tape, a pencil, and some glue. This is such an easy craft, you're gonna love it so much. You gotta make two white circles, so what you're gonna do is take your mason jar lid, top up, and put it on top of your paper, and then you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna go in and you're gonna trace the inner circle. There you go, there's one. And let's just go ahead and make another one. Okie dokie. And now I'm just gonna cut those out. Be careful when you're using your scissors. You don't want to pinch a finger. And if you got little hands, you can just have your parents help you. Sometimes they ask my mom to help me do stuff. All right, so we got two little white circles here. What are we gonna do with those? I'm gonna fold my paper just a little bit without making a super big crease. And I'm gonna cut. I've shown you this trick before. If you fold something and cut it, and you open it up, there you go, it's perfectly symmetrical. All right, let's do that with our other one. I'm gonna fold it, pinch a little crease there in the middle, and then cut my circle. There we go, those are looking pretty similar. All right, I'm just gonna take these and I'm gonna stick them on the inside of my mason jar lid. Let's glue this down. I'm just gonna put it there in the inside ring. Sometimes the glue is just so hard to get out. Blue booger on the top there. There we go. Now it's coming out. I'm just gonna line the inner edge with glue. And I'm just gonna press that to make sure it's all smashed and smurged on the inside. Wait for that to dry. Let's do it with the other one. Wish I had some minions here to do this for me. Oh my gosh, I'd tell the minions to squeeze all my glue and then wait for it to dry for me and I'd be living the life on vacation all the time. Let's stick our other circle down. Okay, so we got our little minion eyes here. Next, let's take our ribbon. I got this nice one here, it's stretchy. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna stick it in the inside of my, my jar here. I'm gonna use some duct tape to tape it down. That easy. All right, so I got my ribbon and I'm gonna smash it down so that it holds. It's pretty tight. Okay, that's the perfect length. I'm gonna go ahead and fasten these two mason jar lids together. Oh my gosh, I love duct tape. Just stuck them together. 
That's so amazing. And then I'm just gonna wrap that around. Get a little more tape for the other side. Gonna do the same thing here. All right, so that's how you do it. And ta-da! There you have it, boys and girls. Super easy DIY minion goggles. I made mine big enough to go over my glasses so I could see. So make your own and let me know how they turned out. Tell me in the comments. Or get your mom and dad to take a picture of the goggles that you made and post them to Instagram and tag Cool School. I want to see what you make. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft and a very special friend. Let's say hello to Edgar the Elephant from DJC Kids. Hello, Edgar. Hi, kids, and hello, Crafty Carol. Edgar, since you're my special guest today, I wanted to do a craft that's inspired by you. Is that okay? Why, sure it is. What are you going to make? I hope it's something delicious. Edgar, you cannot eat this craft. Sorry, buddy but I promise you it's still super duper awesome. Today's craft is a super easy, super cool elephant sweatshirt. I don't think I can sew. Well, that's no problem because this is a no sew craft. All you need is your sweatshirt, fabric paint. I'm gonna use a marker to sketch on my elephant paintbrush. And I don't know, maybe you wanna add some googly eyes to your elephant. I pretty much always want to add googly eyes to my crafts. I just love them. Oh my goodness. Edgar, do you know what time it is? It's, well, I'm not wearing a watch. It's time to make this craft. First step, you lay your sweatshirt out. Now put a piece of cardboard or wax paper, you know, something in between the front and the back so you don't leak paint onto the other side. I am gonna use this big old piece of board. Just a piece of board. I wish it was a pizza board. That sounds good. Okay, next step, you trace your elephant body. Now don't worry too much about this because you can always cover any mistakes you make with your fabric paint. All right, and this is about what your elephant tracing should look like. You're just gonna have the body here and the head and the, the ears there. What do you think, Edgar? What about the trunk? Elephants need their trunks. That's how we eat peanuts. Well, the sleeve is the trunk. Isn't that neat? It is. Now, what color are you going to paint the elephant? Well, Edgar, I'm gonna use blue paint because my good friend, Edgar the elephant is blue. Hey, that's me. Best elephant ever. Next step, you're gonna paint in your elephant figure. Let's get to painting. All right, and then you know, just wanna stick a little cardboard up there in the sleeve so you don't get paint everywhere. And whoop, whoop, whoop. So Edgar, now we just add in any finishing touches that we want, like a mustache or a bow tie or googly eyes. So I'm just gonna do some white here because Edgar, Edgar has those nice big round eyes. I'm gonna do a few of his little white, I don't know, do you call them toenails? I guess you call it, look at your, your toenails there. And now I'm gonna do a little dot for Edgar's eye here. Just a little black circle there, that looks good. And now you just let the paint dry. And once your paint is dry, ta-da! You have the most awesome, fantastic elephant sweatshirt ever. Edgar, do you like it? It's fabulous. Thank you. Oh. Important tip, don't wash the shirt for at least 72 hours so that you can be sure it's absolutely, completely, 100% dry. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft for you here at Cool School. I got a lot of requests in the comments to do a princess craft, so let's do a Cinderella-inspired craft. What's better than that? We're gonna make Two crafts. I'm gonna make a Cinderella crown and I'm also gonna make a magic wand. 
So what do you need to make this craft? It's pretty simple. I've got some blue paper here, some glitter. I got duct tape, a pencil, scissors, got a headband, pretty things like some sequins, some pearls, and I got some glue so I could stick it all together. So I think the next step is to get started making this craft. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch a little crown shape here on our blue paper. And I'm gonna show you a cool trick to make this perfectly symmetrical. So I only drew one side here. You fold your paper kind of loosely like this. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut it out. So look at that. Comes out just perfect. It's gonna be great for our crown. All right, this is a scrap of paper. I don't think we need this. I'm just gonna go and throw it back there. Hope I didn't hit any cats or anything. So next step is let's make this thing glittery. Just cover it in some glue. Okay, so once you got your glue on there, next step is to apply some glitter. So, shake that on there. You want it to be pretty sparkly. You don't want to show up to like a fancy ball and everybody's got a sparkly crown except you. That's crazy. I'm gonna have the sparkliest crown there. Okay, I think that's enough. The next step is you just gotta let the glue dry, which could be really boring, just be sitting around waiting, but it's not gonna be boring at all because I challenge you to a staring contest. All right, get ready, one, two, three, go. You're about to blink. I, oh my gosh, I don't know. Oh man, that was... It was the worst staring contest of my whole career. I think, you know, I probably got some glitter in my eyes, so that's, you know, you maybe won this time, but you know I'm really good. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sparkly little crown front here and we're gonna attach it to our headband so we can put the crown on. Now don't go freaking out on me if you don't have a headband because you can make the band for your crown with something else. You can use a ring of construction paper, you can use like a piece of t-shirt, you know, a little piece of string of fabric and tie that around. You could use a ribbon. There's lots of things you could do to make your crown. So, but I'm gonna use this headband. So let's start by cutting off a piece of duct tape. Snip it. You put the headband down. Once you have it centered, you're gonna roll it over and you're gonna place some tape down. So we're just gonna keep doing that until we got the bottom all covered. All right, so look at that. We've actually already got a little crown here. Except it's not done yet because we're gonna add some sequins and some pearls and you know, just make it all Oh, fabulous, all right. So this is where you can get creative. You can do whatever you want with these. You can you can put a, an initial for your name. You can put one sequin or you can put like a hundred sequins. It's all up to you. Okay, I'm gonna do a pink sequin and I'm gonna do a, another pink sequin. And uh, let's see, mm, another pink one. So I got some more gems on there. That's looking really pretty. All right, let's do some pearls. Making a huge mess. Oh my gosh, gonna have glitter everywhere for weeks. It's okay, glitter's sparkly and awesome. After you get everything added on, you wanna give it some time for everything to dry so all your nice, beautiful things don't fall off or get stuck to your hair. But once you have it all dry, you have one last step. Be fabulous. At the ball, you know, having fun, checking things out. Oh, hey, is that a prince over there? That's cool, I don't know, I'm pretty cool, I'm pretty laid back, I'm feeling confident in my crown. You know, whatever. Well, okay, it's time to make our second Cinderella-inspired craft, the magic wand. I've got a lot of the same ingredients. I'm gonna use the sequins again, glitter, scissors, duct tape, glue, pencil, and a blue card. But I also have sticks here, and I got some uh, curly ribbon. All right, first step in making the magic wand. You can decorate your wand part, your stick. I just painted this one blue. I actually just used a magic marker. I didn't even use paint. I just, just drew it on there. But you can roll it in glitter and make it sparkly, or you can cover it in some shiny washi tape or something fun like that. Or you can just color it blue like I did. Next, we're gonna, we're gonna make two stars. Or you can do maybe a heart on top, or you can put like a little crown at the top of your magic wand. You can do a dragon's head, whatever you want. All right. 
So I'm gonna sketch out my star. All right, so I got a simple little star here. Now how to make two stars, that's easy. I'm gonna fold over my paper and then we're gonna cut the star out. Okay, check it out. Two stars, oh look, they're still connected. They're like best friends. Aww. All right, sorry guys. Okay, so now we're gonna decorate these stars with some glitter. So I'm gonna take a piece of paper here to lay down so I don't make a big old mess. And let's get some glue down there. Let's use some gold on this one. We did all the, the multicolored pretty glitter on the uh, on the crown, but let's do some gold for our, our magic wand. Ooh, that looks fancy. All right, so we got one star covered in awesome gold glitter. Let's do the other one. Dump on your glitter. There you go, just lots and lots of, just a healthy, heaping amount of glitter. All right, so then once you got your stars all glittered up, then you gotta wait and let them dry. So it looks like our, our stars are nice and dry. So I'm gonna put one face down. Now I'm gonna take my stick, my wand right here, and I'm gonna place it in the middle. I'm gonna get a little bit of tape. Slap on some tape there in the middle of the star, like so. Okay, and now I'm gonna add some ribbons. So same thing there, you just put it there, and then you just tape it down. Okay, look at that. We're almost ready to cast some spells. We're gonna glue on our other star to the back. So let's just glue on this other star here. And we'll take our other star, fit it on there. Well, there you go. We got a nice Cinderella-inspired fairy godmother magic wand. Wish I had a giant bowl of candy. Ta-da! Look at that! Magic bowl, a bowl of candy just appeared out of nowhere. This magic wand, magic wand's amazing. You gotta, you gotta, you're gonna have to get make one of these. <laughs> well, there you have it, boys and girls. We made a princess crown and a magic wand. Well, hey there, boys and girls. Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft for you right here at Cool School. I hope you're excited because today we have an extra super craft for all you superheroes out there. We're making the number one most awesome superhero accessory, and that is we're making a jetpack. And the reason I'm making a jetpack today is because I got inspired by my buddy, Drew Pendis. He saves the first day of school, and I don't know, he might just have a, a friend named Crafty Carol help him out. So what do you need to make this craft? Two large plastic bottles. I'm using large soda bottles. Tissue paper. I've got some orange and yellow here. Glue, some glitter, scissors, and duct tape. Okie dokie, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take those big soda bottles and we're gonna get them all glittered up. All right, so I got my two extra large soda bottles here. Put some glitter down here. We take our bottle here and we're gonna just cover it in glue and roll it in glitter. You gotta work fast so your glue doesn't dry while you're doing this. And let's just roll it around here. Well, that's looking pretty good, check that out. Let's just get a little more glitter up top here. I like this part because it's kind of like we're making a snowstorm with glitter. Pretty awesome snowstorm. All right, so we got one of our bottles all glittered up nice and glittery and beautiful. And I'm just gonna let that dry. Let's do bottle number two. Okay, our second bottle is looking pretty awesome and jet packy and superhero-y and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm just gonna let this one dry too. Next step is we're gonna make our flames go out the, the back of the, the jet pack and propel you through space. I got one kind of big long strip of tissue paper here. I'm just gonna cut kind of some sort of triangles and zigzags. Just keep going to make it look like super awesome crazy jet pack flames powered by jet fuel. Awesome. Kind of looks like giant teeth. <laughs> that was my impression of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, let's do some yellow flames now. I'm gonna double this up. I'm gonna do a bunch at once. And there you go with the yellow. And let's do this orange here. 
next we are going to put all these nice super awesome flames together and you're gonna need two bunches of flames because you got two different jet pack canisters got some yellow here I've got some orange here a dark orange and you just layer them like that so you can see all the colors and then I'm just gonna roll it up there is our first bundle of awesome jetpack flames let's do our other roll this up okie doke so now i'm just going to take some tape here to secure the ends of that so it all sticks together there we go let's do this one too now look at that yeah, it's pretty awesome. Alrighty, one of the next things we're gonna do is we're gonna make some straps because you gotta be able to strap on your jetpack, right? I got some tape here. I'm just gonna do one nice long strip here. I'm gonna double it up and we'll double it up going back that way. And so the end result, what you want is to have two sides of tape stuck together so that you've got the non-sticky part on both sides. Let's see, is that long enough to be my strap? Oh yeah, that's good, that's good. So let's do another one, measure them out to be the same length. And oh my gosh, I ran out of tape. Oh. It's okay though, because I have more. No big deal in the Crafty Carol crafting station. You might say, well, Crafty Carol, that purple tape doesn't match your yellow tape. And I'll just say, it's no big deal. Oh, what is a big deal is I'm getting it stuck everywhere except where I'm supposed to get it stuck. There we go, now it's stuck in the right place. Alrighty, you got part purple, part yellow. Just for good measure to make a match. Add a little purple over here. So there we go, we got two cool straps for our jetpack here. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our two jetpack canisters here. So I'm gonna use some silver duct tape now. Slap them on there, attach that, come around here. Alrighty, and let's do one more strand of duct tape around there. This time, I'm gonna take my strap here i'm gonna just hold it down there i'm gonna loop it around and then make it so it's like a circle i'm just gonna hold that down with a little bit of tape there and let's do our other strap make a nice loop here and then we're gonna roll this tape through this can get tricky because you got a lot of tape but there you go, you kind of see it's pretty simple. You're just making your two loops and you're taping them down. Okay, oh, this is looking pretty awesome. All right, so last step, we're gonna take our little our little flames here. It also kind of looks like pom-poms if you're a cheerleader. And you see, see, you got your C, got your C. So I'm just gonna take this, stick it right there in the drink spout. Make sure it's nice and secure so when you're out there jetpacking all over the world, then, uh, you won't have any troubles. Check it out. Da, 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 da. It's one awesome chip pick. me making a jetpack landing. There you have it, boys and girls. The most awesome, super duper superhero jetpack ever. Hi, it's me, Nikki. When I grow up, I think I want to be a costume designer. A costume designer is a person who comes up with all the cool costumes you see on stage, on TV, and in the movies. I would love to design costumes for sci-fi movies like Guardians of the Galaxy and Star Wars. And cut! Nikki, great job! But I think we can lose the uniform on Chewbacca. Oh, the script says pilot. Yes, but not an airplane pilot, a spaceship pilot. Costume designers work closely with directors and writers on movies. They need to have a thorough understanding of the story the characters, and the location so the costumes make sense. Before you come up with costume ideas, you have to research the time period and place. Like if a show is set during the medieval times, the costume designer needs to learn all 
about the armor that knights wore. Like linen garments, then chainmail. That's the fancy name for the tiny metal loops linked together. Followed by a metal chest plate, armor for legs and arms, and finally, a visor and helmet. Whoa! Talk about heavy metal! After you've done your research, you get to sketch out all of your ideas on paper. All right, we're working on Inside Out, My Little Pony, the mashup movie. Nikki, what do you got? Hmm, let's get Anger a Rainbow Dash mohawk and tail, and Rainbow Dash can wear his shirt and tie. Perfect! Magnificent! This will be the greatest movie ever! To be a costume designer, you need to love fashion, love doing research, and have a great imagination. Well, I've got that covered. I love making costumes for all my MLP dolls. I know a ton of facts. Uh, yeah, check out my Nikki's Wikis here. And one of my favorite hobbies is doodling cool costumes. A job as a costume designer would be so awesome. You get to design outfits and see them on the little screen or the big screen. You could even win an Oscar. And the Oscar for the best costume designer goes to Nikki for all her work in the greatest mashup movie, part three. <gasps> thank you. I'd like to thank the Academy and shout out to Cool School. Wow, that would make me so proud. Hi there, kids. I'm Crafty Carol with a brand new craft for you right here at Cool School. Now, I know you saw me do my craft for my fur real friend, Star Lily, right? Well, now she's back, as is Sadie. So now, let's let's uh, tell the kids out there hello. Hello, hi. kids, hi! hi! All right, so, oh, that's right, Star Lily said hi. So, Sadie is gonna help me make a new craft that I know you are going to love. Sadie, tell the kids what it is. It's a unicorn headband. Wow, that's only the most amazing craft in the world. So what do we need? We need a headband. We're gonna use this glittery cardstock. I've got glow, scissors, ooh, and some fun little doodads, gems, and stick-on jewels here, and some tape. That's it. So now that we know what we need, uh, what do you think we should do? Let's get started. Oh, that's such a good idea. Yeah, let's get started making this craft. Uh-oh, I think she might need her sugar berry. Will you feed, will you feed our, our star lily? All right. She sometimes likes when you... Oh, does she like her ears tickle? Yeah, she, her horse can turn in different colors. So happen. see how simple it is? I just cut this into a triangle, and then I, I rolled it together. Yeah, I'm gonna do that with yours, too. What I'm gonna do now that I have this handy dandy triangle here is I'm just gonna roll it around until you have basically a little horn here. See? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna trim some of the extras. Tape on the inside and tape the outside here. Pretty much looking like a unicorn horn, right? Oh my gosh, she's a magical unicorn. We gotta put our horn here on our headband. I'm gonna make a little snip right here in the side. If I folded it like this, just a little bit, I'm gonna take my scissors and just oh so carefully, I'm gonna make a little, just the tiniest little cut. So see there, we got two little cuts. And then slide one through and the other. So I've got it poked through the two holes. I'm just gonna ease it on around. All right, you ready to decorate? Yep. So just put lots of jewels and awesome things on there. There's some glue if you need it. We're gonna sing Ba Ba Black Sheep. I think she likes that one. How did she know? Okay, I'm just gonna do some jewels in the front, and then I, well, she's going crazy! Didn't you know that Star Lily's having a party on Friday? Disco. I, oh my gosh, she's having a disco party? Yep, she's inviting all her for real friends. For real friends? So while our glue dries on our headbands, no. let's uh, let's clean up a little bit. Right back there. Okay. All right. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, we're unicorns. We're magical unicorns. You look amazing. So do you. Wow, well, thank you. Let's go. <laughs> a brand new craft for you right here at Cool School. Today's craft is a super awesome one and it's very, might I say, winterific. You know that I love snow. It's one of my top 
a hundred favorite things. You know, I love snow, I love the beach, I love crafting, I love glitter. But snow is right, it's right up there. It's one of my almost awesome favorite things. So what are we making today? We are going to be making a Yeti hat, AKA an abominable snowman hat. You're gonna be looking pretty tough on the playground. No one messes with the abominable snowman, oh no. So what do you need to make this craft? Well, I've got a fuzzy winter hat. I've got two pieces of felt, light blue and a sort of sparkly white. I've got giant googly eyes, scissors, and a hot glue gun. Hot glue guns can be pretty serious business, so be careful. Get a grown up. You know, the abominable snowman is from the Himalayas and that's like, all the way on the other side of the world from where I am right now. So I wonder what time it is. Hmm. It's probably craft o'clock. So let's get started making this craft. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my light blue felt. I'm gonna glue it onto the hat like right in the middle there. Cutting a little sort of half circle here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not like the abominable snowman is, is some like put together nice neat preppy boy. He's pretty wild. So I'm gonna try that out see how I like that. Well that looks pretty cool. Get this little extra piece of felt here. I don't know what we're gonna use this for. If I'm doing like a wild west sort of sort of costume where I have a blue mustache. So what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna stick this felt inside so that I have a barrier between the sides of the hat because I don't want the hat to get glued shut because then I won't be able to put it on my head. So what good is a hat if you can't put it on your head? Oof, here we go. I'm doing this kind of fast because I don't want the hot glue to dry. Ah, it's drying, it's drying, it's drying, no! Smurge it onto there. Look in, don't want to fall over. Stay put. I'm trying to work here. So that's there. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Put this felt back there. I don't need that anymore. Okie dokie, so it's time to do some Yeti teeth. Yeah, some people kind of lump it in there with Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, or the Skunk Ape, or the Yowie. I've never seen a Yeti in real life, but I'm going to believe the legend that they have pretty big teeth. So we're gonna make some big chompers here. The teeth are easy, and we've got so much felt here that we can we can make lots of mistakes. So there are a few different words for the Yeti. Of course, we've got the abominable snowman. That's one. And in Nepal, some people call it a mete. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. If anybody from Nepal, from around the Himalayas is watching, tell me if I pronounce that correctly. Mete? Mete, I think? If I ever meet the abominable snowman, I don't want to make a fool of myself. Um, you can just call me Steve. So I've got the teeth here. I'm gonna cut further up so that I have a little wiggle room. Just trust me, trust me on that. All right, so we've got our little front here. I'm gonna flip it over. Let's get our glue gun here. And just inside, I'm gonna glue the teeth, glitter face down, because I want the glitter to be, you know, something that you see. Let's stick that in there. Oh my gosh, this is looking really good, I love it. So now, we need some Yeti eyes. Let's glue these googly eyes on. There's one, I just went for it. It doesn't matter if you don't get the eyes perfectly lined up, just making some crazy eyes. Oh look, there's Crafty Carol wearing a totally regular hat. Not, check it out. Got an amazing Yeti hat. I don't think I wanna call it an abominable snowman hat because abominable means bad. It means like disgusting, loathsome, odious. It's right, I checked a thesaurus. Got it from Miss Booksy's library. And this Yeti's probably a pretty cool guy, so. Amazing Yeti, not Abominable Snowman. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you the reason I made this Yeti hat is I got inspired by Drew. You know, the amazing, stupendous Drew Pendus. He told me a story about how he went to the Himalayas and had an adventure with a Yeti.